Welcome to VR Genomics, a virtual reality browser. It aims to help researchers discover connections and associations between genomics datasets, like the Human Genome Project, and their experimental data from the lab. It lets researchers browse data, develop hypotheses, and to find patterns and topology that we hope will speed up their research. Chromosomes are what contain the genes, which in turn contain DNA. This DNA is what contains the instructions for creating new cells. Many of the genes are shared among species, since they share an evolutionary ancestor. In the fruit fly there were four chromosomes, containing 13,602 genes. Drosophila melanogaster was the first species to have all its genes sequenced, annotated and mapped into a linear sequence called a genome. The fly genome has around 70% of its genes held in common with humans, which is why researchers studying genetic markers for disease in the fly can draw many insights into humans. This particular gene is being studied since it appears to play a role in neurodegeneration, as well as in cancer. What the browser represents is all of the sum of known scientific knowledge about this particular gene. We're looking at a reference sample of a particular gene across over 30,000 samples. The annotations that make up a genome browser are incredibly useful to researchers. However, they tell us what we know already, not what we don't know. Researchers need to load experimental data into this browser so that they can compare, for example, healthy cells with diseased ones, and then find out the differences. This is known as a genome association study, and is the principal method by which genetics research happens. This is data from an existing experiment done in 2004. It contains the gene, the reference condition, the disease condition, and then most importantly the fold change, the ratio of change between the disease versus the normal cell. It also contains the p-value, which is the measure of statistical significance that we should attach to each of these results. This study, Transcriptional Signature of an Adult Brain Tumor in Drosophilia by Loop, Hearth and others, was published in 2004. It was one of the first studies to make use of the Affymetrix gene chips for Drosophila at the time. Many of the 321 genes identified by this study as up or down regulated by the disease condition have since been found to have homologues in other species, including humans, which is why we chose it. At the time of the study, it wasn't possible to analyse all this data, but we now know most of it to be extremely important. We're now translating this data into something that hopefully means something to the researcher. The size of each of these spheres is related to the p-value. The larger it is, the more significant it is. The y-axis, or the height or depth of each of these objects, is related to the fold change, which is a ratio, and it can be either positive or negative. This reveals a lot to the, to the researcher in terms of whether a gene is up or down, down regulated, and how much it's expressed. In order to truly represent these genes, however, we have to locate them on the XY axis as they would do on a gene chip. This looks pretty much random and represents the reality of a researcher's view on this data. As a researcher flies around, however, they can bring up data on each of these genes and bring in their own understanding of the biological processes that each of these genes are associated with. It's common for researchers to group genes when sifting through data like this into their functional classes, which is related to their biological function. Some of these are unknown, and some of these are extremely well known. In this case, we allow the researcher to light up in green all of the genes that are related to a particular class, and visualize that here. This is a simplification but you can see that these genes are topologically clustered, which also indicates that they're functionally clustered in this particular case. 
These genes belong to the functional class of asymmetric stem cell division and have been found to be homologous with the same class of genes in humans. They've since been found to play a key role in causing cancer and they are topologically linked. These genes are vital in regulating stem cell division and their absence or misregulation is what can create cancer stem cells. These cells can divide without limitation and are mostly resistant to surgical resection and radiotherapy. What we're now showing is the process of taking the cluster of genes that we've known to be interesting in flies and mapping them onto the relevant human genome. The browser, if it were dynamic, would be loading this data from HG19 and mapping the appropriate genes to it. In this case, we know that this would have yielded significant research results and steps forward in terms of the management of brain cancer in humans. In conclusion, there is more data held currently by genomics research than can possibly be analyzed. We believe that a virtual reality browser, if it were dynamic, if it could include multiple data sets, including experimental data, would be able to significantly accelerate the process of sifting through this data and finding new pathways for diseases.